We're on day three. Day three? I know. It's not taking three days. It's just, you know. We, we've been. When you only work two hours a day. <laughs> we've been busy. <laughs> I want to get a little more core wool on this head before I start making the sheep. So I've got a little strip here, about five inches. I always wonder if since I always wrap in the same direction from the same direction if my animals have an energy that's a little like <laughs> spring-loaded you know what I mean <laughs> like are they are they existing on the shelf like twisted and needing a chiropractor uh, this is what I wonder <laughs> okay so just like the dough I'm going for pointy nose wider at the back of the head. Okay. And it's the same shapes. We're going to make a little chin with a little inch of core wool. Looking to make sure that's what I did. That is what I did. So nice, really narrow, almost like a little um, Advil. <laughs> <laughs> like a little bullet. You need some ibuprofen this morning? <laughs> so it's a little wide, so I'm gonna roll it in my hands together. You should be a pro at this. So do you think easier to make the deer first? Yes, I think so. And then we're going to make that little back of the head um, rectangle. I've got a six inch, it's probably about a third of a piece of this kind of roving. And um, I do this on the round part of the Zoli Toll. The flat part's just a little bit too wide. Um, but I do it loosely because I need it to flatten out when I pull it off. So I'm not pulling super tight. And I'm making about an inch and a half wide pillow on here. I'm going to give it that little tug. How's my stab it centerage? Good. Good. Before we started, I checked it out. Oh, okay, good. You're good like that. Well, <laughs> not always. Okay. Same idea. I'm going to tack the top down and then fold the fringy side around to make that little square on its head. Like deja vu. Yes. And make a spot for the eyes. The fawn eyes really stick out off their head a lot. They have great big eyes. And I don't think I'm going to need a cheekbone piece um, just because it's so little. And once I put that muzzle on, it's going to fill this all in a little bit. But I'd like to get the eyes on so I know where they are. And I do um, a little brow on these too. So I'm going to fold the eyes in my hands with black core. Try to make it as round as possible. And 
and they're going to look a little huge. I'm just stabbing at the edges, always at the edges to keep it round. We're about to enter the alien phase. Yeah. <laughs> UPS is here. Prepare for some barking. Yeah, cue barking. <laughs> you let me down. They're they're poised. <laughs> oh, <laughs> impressive! <laughs> Nobody knows what we're talking about because they can't hear the truck. Really, nobody's got anything to say. No, nope, they're chilled. It's very gray and rainy today. Even the dogs are subdued. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is what it should look like right now. Great big crazy animal. <laughs> okay, let's make that muzzle and uh, hopefully help, help, it, help, help it out a little bit. Quick. So I'm going to do Tawny try to restack it. This is the long staple, so uh, it's hard to get. When you're working this little, sometimes you have to cut it even. And then um, and then just some acorn and a little bit of gray, I think. Put the gray back here. I'm going to let it get lighter towards the nose this time. So I've got the tawny at the tip of the nose and the gray at the back of the head. And then went, uh, a little bit wider than your thumb. It's not as big as the dough. Doe, the deer? Mm-hmm. golden sun today. We could. Having a party back mm -hmm. there with UPS. So the dogs funny. did wake up. That's about that. it. Alright, this is a little fussy because it's so little. I don't know if you can even see See, I think I'm zooming it. so that you can lean okay. if you need to. Okay. I'm tacking it on the top of the nose, trying to keep it centered. I'm going to pull off some oh. of this extra. <laughs> Looks like an emu. Yeah. Try to work this around the eye a little bit, soften that transition to the back of the head. <coughs> Fussy bits. Then I've got to shape this lip. <laughs> yes, yes, you do. <laughs> Cause it's looking a little crazy. Oh my gosh, I wonder if they can hear that. We might have to pause and I go see what's happening. Them. I'm going to check. I'm going to chastise them. Don't chastise them. It's really funny. The whole thing. What's happening? I don't know. UPS is still here. Oh. All right. I have a little bit of this off-white and white mix that we made that I'm going to use for the brows and I'm going to do a tiny little double taco just like we did for the deer they got kind of 
kind of silly back there. Yes. With UPS. Man. We need to have more visitors on our videos. <laughs> like Mr. Rogers. Want me to go grab the UPS guy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I should probably look at a picture about now. <laughs> the warning sign is starting to go up. You're seeing a flash of yeah. deer tail. A flash of... Mm, let's make sure we're leading the people in the right direction <laughs> here. Don't step back too far. Okay. Finley has strategically placed himself directly behind you. Yes. power of my boots. <laughs> okay. Brows are on. Fluff is not under control. Looking a little crazy. We need to get a nose on. That's going to help me. Something's gonna help me. Oh boy. Okay. Give me a little nose. I'm gonna roll a little nose. Their faces are so triangular. Yes. Well, we're doing a very simple mouth on these, and so it's the stabbing that's gonna make it look right. Um, sorry, I have to tip it back. So it's a little bit hard to direct um, or convey um, what shapes need to happen, what stabbing needs to happen. I don't want it to look like a Muppet that's making a face. <laughs> which is, is how that it what you're feeling right which now? Which is how it looks right now. You know when Kermit does that like mm -hmm. frowny face thing? Mm -hmm. That's a little bit how it looks. That's a good face though. It's just not a deer face. Alright, let me look at a picture. We're getting there. We're getting there. Okay. I gave him a little bit too much of an overbite. So I'm just tapping the nose back into place a little bit. And trying to define that bridge of the nose with some stabbing. Okay. So the, the fawn also becomes um, much more fawn-like when it's got its ears. So we'll make those. And I'm going to make them the same way, just a little less wool. I'm going to use all top coat. talk about Kermit, you refer to Kermit and like everyone knows who you're talking about. Well, everybody knows Kermit. I know. Yeah. That, that's like my, that, that's the Milo dream. It's just, <laughs> you know, like Milo. When he, yeah, like Milo. You're famous in a, um, gotta get bigger. in a niche sort of way. <laughs> Everyone wants to be a household name. Okay. Flip this over. Stab the center line. And then draw. Just like the dough. I'm not using the Zola tool. It just would get a little bit big. So same shape 
but I'm reining in the size a little bit. And before it gets too stuck, I'm gonna lift it out and get my um, fair in there. I can't wait to hear this UPS man story. <laughs> I want to know what was so funny. Okay. This one is a little straighter on this side and I can get that angle on this side. So the other one I'm going to do opposite. So this is this ear. And now I'm going to make this ear. if I'll ever get tired of how amazing this process is. Hopefully not. Have you done sculpting with clay? Yes. More frustrating than this process? Um, no. No, it's it's easier in a way because needle felting, you're combining well, unless you're just working in a solid color, but you're combining color. Whereas clay, you're just you can really just focus on the 3D. Um and not and, as and, forgiving though? No, it's very it's very forgiving. Clay is? Yeah. Wool is forgiving, but there's so many different textures. So then you've got that whole element. Like you got to find the right fiber. You know what I mean? Clay is just clay. Now with clay, I went on to make bronze, you know, have them cast in bronze. Um, but like some people do, you know, more like ceramics or like I, scu I sculpted in a clay that didn't dry. It didn't. So it's like a has some petroleum or plastic element to it. I I don't remember. Should talk more about what I'm doing. I feel very quiet today. Well, you just did the ear. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say it all again. Okay, so I kind of tugged that apart by mistake to fix it. So I, I, I'm looking at these and I've got this kind of more bent is going to be the bottom and this straighter angle is going to be the top. And I can try to kind of fold that over a little bit more with my needles. Make that fold that they have there. It is really cool though, like how much sculpting you can do with the needles. And then just fan that fluff out and put it on the back of the head behind that rectangle. So on the deer, you did the forehead piece. On the before. deer, I did a. Um, I did a bridge of the nose forehead piece. I'm not going to do that on the fawn. Huh. It's too much wool. So I'm really just going to stab what I have on here into the right shape. He's going to get, his forehead's going to get a little more fiber on it, but. Not a full shape. Not a shape, yeah. <laughs> He's got a shifty nose.
So I want to get a little bit of fiber across the forehead. You know, I don't have I didn't do eyelashes on the fawn. It's too small for it, it, it just would look ridiculous. Like what you could do is you could take a little roll of black and just kind of make a um, almost like you're putting eyeliner on. Like let it kind of come off that corner a little bit. And that'll look kind of look Eyelashy. like lashes, yeah. Look eyelashy. And then a little black line around the mouth, I think, is going to help it. Just don't let it go too far back. It should stop. Losing an ear here. All right, so I want I want some fiber to come onto the bridge of the nose, and then I want some to come down each side. I'm going to blend a little bit of chestnut and a little bit of acorn together, and I might actually cut this in half because it's just long it's just a lot of fiber to manage on such a small face so then restacking you lose that you lose blunt. the cut edge right so now I can put this one going this way when I don't make shapes I feel like it takes so much stabbing because you've got to control all this fuzz you know she looks like a little fox and then some here Mm. Just got a lot in the top of your head. Sorry. <laughs> you do need to work. <laughs> and then some here. Especially this, um, the chestnut is um, a little wiry. We love the color, but it's a little wiry, so we usually blend it, blend it in with things. Oh, it looks cute with a little hair sticking up. I might leave it like that. I feel like the neck is a tiny bit thin. I'm going to wrap a little bit more core wool around it before I color it. I'm trying to remember how I, what did I do here? Oh, I did the same thing. 
So if you have a strip about Just going to get a little bit more wool on there. A little more at the bottom than the top. Oh, I got a weird bump. Got to get rid of that bump. No goiters. So on the fawn, we didn't do a chest piece. We didn't do butt bones or hips. Um, just doesn't, just doesn't need it. I'm just looking at the two next to each other to see what I like about each one. I think in general the chin the chin could be a tiny bit more forward than I have this chin, um, but I, th I think it's I think it's okay. Then we want to put um, we want to put the white dot in the eye with the bright white. I'm going to use a 40 gauge so that I don't lose my eye. Don't want to lose that roundness. So if you just keep stabbing in the same place, it will shrink down and disappear in there. In a good way, like become smaller is what I'm trying to say. Like it kind of looks big and out of control, but it keeps stabbing in the same place. It sucks right in. And it goes down in there, yeah. If you have a little, sometimes you can twist the little fringy fibers around your needle and get them in there. But if there's remainders and it's well felted, I just, I just cut them off. All right, now we are ready for a tail and a pelt. So I'm gonna make the tail um, just as a shape, I'm going to use a little bit of tan core and then some top coat. Doing the acorn, the chestnut, and I think that's it. I'm not going to make it dark at the tip. I'm just going to leave it at that. And then I want to felt something about, about the size of the ear. The, the, the fawn tails are kind of, kind of long like they grow into their tail their little tail is a little long for their body I feel like and it has a little more hang and wag to it like a lamb what you got there Milo just looking at my proverbs you know when we do these videos I really I felt all in one place but if I were working because I'm trying to, you know, keep it where everybody can see it. But if I were working alone, I would work all over the stab it so that I don't kill one spot. I'm going to blend some off-white and white together for the button tail. Yeah, you have a good one? No. <laughs> I mean... Sure. Uh, Chinese proverb, the lone wolf may yet kill as many deer as a pack. What's your interpretation of that, oh, ye, ye wise one? Um, I don't know. Don't give up. If you're alone, you can still do stuff. <laughs> you can still do stuff. <laughs> you can still survive on deer meat. <laughs> A lone wolf may yet kill as many deer as a pack. Hmm. Maybe it has to do with a pack of wolves. Authoritarianism. Oh, like Is that a word? <laughs> yes, it's a whole thing. Did I just make up a word? Oh, oh geez. Sticking this crazy huge tail on now. Poor little deer. He's gonna get made fun of for his big tail. 
all the other little deer are gonna be like, what? Are they going to laugh and call him names? Yes, I'm gonna stab a little bit of this white onto his bum. Never judge a reindeer from close by when you got it from a rich man because you may find that some of the antlers are missing. <laughs> Who says that? The what? Finnish, no. the Finnish people. Oh, naturally, where they have reindeer. I, so Never I just judge can't it from close wrap my by head. When you got it from a rich man. I can't wrap my head the around these things. Like shady. Oh, I don't understand what they're talking like what situation are they talking about you Antlers bought something from somebody and it's not what you thought it was gonna it's like it's like old time Craigslist <laughs> be careful all right we have a white butt we have somewhat cute face I need a little fluff on the neck so I'm just gonna lay it, I'm just gonna lay it on here. I'm gonna lay a little bit of tawny. A little bit, a little bit of acorn. And a tiny bit of chestnut. Then I'm gonna stab it on. So the white-tailed deer, uh -huh. 201 days gestation length. Is that a long time or a short time? Um, that's a long time. Horses are 11 months. I think bigger animals tend to be longer times. So 200. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Yeah. Oh, that's too much math. Why'd they do it in days? Oh. So people are nine months. Hang on. Less than people. Less than people. Well, nine months is 270. Okay. But. Okay, now we need to make a pelt. So I'm not going to use coral wool. Oh, no, 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 no. Depends. If you feel like it needs a little oomph, a little filling in, which I think maybe this one does. Your little face is making me mad. I didn't get it quite right. I texted questions about the UPS situation. He's just hot. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true. And that, <laughs> that creates giggles, apparently. <laughs> Okay, I am going to use a little bit of core. A very thin amount. Just really stretch it out. <laughs> Who's that? Who was that text from? <laughs> well, I texted Jennifer to see what what the story was. Oh, one horn honk. Now they're all fired up. So to make this pelt smaller than my dough pelt, I'm putting tawny, trying to make sure I've got it towards the edges. And then I'll put a little bit of acorn. The steeple length is long enough that I'll probably just pull a thin. See how I'm doing this? I grab the tips and just pull, and you'll get a nice, thin, consistent piece. Horses are pregnant for 11 months? Yes. That's a long time. Yes. This does say the larger the species, the longer the gestation. Kind of like that giraffe that just wouldn't have its baby. <laughs> What's a giraffe's gestation? I don't know. Whoa, 13 to 15 months. Wow. What's an elephant? Uh, I'm looking. <laughs> oh, that's a long time. It's a long time to be preggers. Oh, 18 to 22. Well, that's almost two years. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Okay. Stretch this little baby out. Oh, the stinking spots. You're on your own for the spots. <laughs> I'm going to show you one. Two. Show them two. I'm going to show them two, and then I'm going to move on. Why? I just don't... <sighs> I have information. What? I just, I just struggle with these details. Yeah. I don't enjoy it. Is the problem. I like it when it's done. Yeah. These, this, here's some information about the spots. You'll love them now. Oh, okay. When most deer are born, they have white spots, which disappear as they mature. Yes. The spots help fawns blend into their background to help camouflage them. So yes. if you deny your fawn the spots... Yeah. No, I knew all that. I still don't like them. It's going to get, it's going to get snapped up. <laughs> oh, the spots. So I tried neps because I was going to be lazy. Throw, sprinkle some <laughs> neps on there. Two stabs, done. They were going to magically stick. But the spots are really distinctive, and so you can't put a web over the neps because it blurs them and doesn't look right. And you can't stab neps on because they just all accumulate on your needle. <laughs> they don't actually like really needle felt on. Um, so oh, I'm just gonna let all this go around. But I am gonna take a little bit of this pelt and make a little kind of flap of skin right here. And then the rest I'm gonna Boom, just like that. Yeah. Okay. And then their spots seem to have a, a little... Well, I shouldn't say that. There's no pattern. They all look... When I looked at images, they all looked a little different. But they do tend to create a little... A little stripe kind of down each side. So what I've been doing all two times that I've made this is rolling it in my fingers... I'm using the pure white and stabbing it on. Now the problem is, if you just stab the spot, you end up with a tufted, um, ah, a tufted um, fawn. So could you use the 40 gauge needle and really take you your time? You could use the 40 gauge needle and really take your time and it won't make as big of a dent. But you kind of need to stab everywhere. I mean, you're going to get dense no matter what. So um, kind of when you're done and all over stabbing, see how that smooths it back out? You did four, by the way. <laughs> but now look, he's all squished. He's all misshapen. He's all squished on the side. I'll do four more real quick. Ooh, eight. Oh, no, eight. Good for How a many tutorial. spots <laughs> is your fawn going to have? That's the question. It's like the freaking bare toes. Just got to do it. I mean, you went through all the trouble to make the thing. I know. Give them the spots. And then they get all skinny because you're stabbing, stabbing, stabbing. Can you tell how frustrated I get? <laughs> With this, oh, like a lone rogue fiber. All right, now at least he's symmetrical. So my little, my little. On, needs a little love, a little more needling, kind of, oh jeez, oh I just hit the camera, kind of a little more finishing off, but I think that's everything. It's very cute. Are you cute? 
I don't know. Keep stabbing. I'll get there. <laughs> no more jokes, Mom. No, I don't no think I. Jokes. I don't think I can stand it anymore. I, I barely had any. <laughs> I wonder if people figured the one out. I'm sure they did. I, I hope so. <laughs> Um, so we hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, you can find the supply packs at Serafina Fiber Art along with all of the other tools and products that we mentioned and used along the way. If you're looking on our website under the tutorials link, um, everything's in order there. So it's a real easy organized place to find all the videos rather than, you know, searching around on the spider web of YouTube. There are plenty of other projects that we have available for free um, that are similar. The pony, the donkey, the fox is about equally challenging. It's just a little bit different. Um, and you can find us on Facebook. Serafina Fiber Art is our business page. So if you follow her like that, you can get her updates. The Fiber Fairy visits there. You can learn about the Fiber Fairy. And our group is called Serafina Felting Fanfare, and it's a closed group, um, or private, I'm not sure what the word is, but it's where we can share our projects and our pictures and ask for help. It's a great place to ask for help because there's a lot of longtime felters there that um, are familiar with our products and can help you out. Yes, it's fun to see what people talk about on there. Yeah, and we're fun. <laughs> so thanks so much, and um, happy felting. Bye.